Welcome back to our community. Susie Tom is visiting with Amy Miller and Meredith Baker from Canton Harbor High School. There's a special class that you are working with teens, preparing them for the job force. And then, and Amy, I really want to talk to you from the employer standpoint mm-hmm. as well. Sure. How, how in this day and age does a person select a good employee mm-hmm. w- without stealing them away from <laughs> other people? From someone else. Yes, yeah. because it seems like everybody's got a job right yeah. now. Yeah. I. Um, that's a very good question. <laughs> I would say a part of it... Um, is thinking about what you were talking about earlier. Who is someone that is a long-term investment? I think that sometimes employers are looking for someone that they hope is going to stick around. And another piece um, I was thinking about a minute ago was um, for our generation too, there is more of a change in jobs quickly, it seems like. I know of several of my friends who are in their 20s, 30s who have had three or four jobs and myself included in that. Mm -hmm. And so I think sometimes what happens is um, we we are kind of flippant. And so then that affects the whole entire, the generation can affect the job force and what it looks like. So I do am curious what's going to happen within the next several years with this millennial generation that I'm in of we kind of bounce around. We want to try different things and that's okay. But then it does affect, like you were saying, employers when They're trying to find someone who's going to stick around for the long haul. And why wouldn't they want to? Because they're investing in you. And so then if you leave in three years, they have to start all over again and invest in someone else. And I know that that can be really frustrating. Um, But I I don't know what the answer is other than I just think it's it's kind of a generational problem, I guess I would say. You bring up just so many good points. It's important to kind of be aware of the trends so that we can get ahead of that Mm -hmm. game and um, know that when you're training someone, you might Mm -hmm. be training them for somebody else. Mm Yeah. And um, use them as -hmm. as well. as What kind of incentives can people do to make a person stay longer? Yeah. Because there used to be the day, Mm -hmm. man, you you got a job, you got your Mm -hmm. first real job Mm -hmm. and you were there for 30 years and then you know and mm-hmm. then you'd have a big fun retirement party yeah. but you're right so many different things mm-hmm. happening differently yeah. with this next generation yeah. that's entering the workforce the other thing that's interesting and this goes along with the getting along with people mm-hmm. for the first time we have like four generations working all together yeah. yes. side by side yeah. that's so true. in the workforce so mm-hmm. how do you get that person that's you know in their in their second career mm-hmm. in their 60s or even 70s that's still got a lot of energy mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. having a lot yeah. of fun um, not ready to retire yet. Mm-hmm. Working with the twenty-year-old mm-hmm. who's doing that, mm-hmm. doing yeah. this for the first time. How do you get those two mm-hmm. people to, yeah, cooperate as they're rubbing elbows? Yeah. One way that I feel, at least um, in schools that I've previously worked at, that's really helped, and I think would help in any uh, workforce, mm-hmm. would be just doing those like I hate to call them family outings, but like you know, building that mm-hmm. um, community you know, within the workplace, because Mm -hmm. I feel like when you when you feel appreciated and when you feel like there's Mm -hmm. other people that you can turn to, then it's kind of like you see people hang on to jobs that they don't really like because they like the people all the time, Mm -hmm. you know, and Mm -hmm. or because they feel like it's home, Mm -hmm. you know, all the time. So I feel like that's one good way Mm -hmm. to, you know, build you know, so just those team building exercises yeah. really do work. I yeah. know we've got uh, in this area the those rooms, escape rooms, yep. and mm-hmm. everybody's taking their teams to the escape love rooms. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love those yeah. too. And <laughs> to yeah. try and figure out yeah. working together, mm-hmm. you really do yeah. learn to work together to mm-hmm. get yourselves out of that. And yeah. it doesn't always have to be something that costs a whole bunch of money either. Mm-hmm. Just like you know, do a potluck yeah. once once nice. a month, or mm-hmm. you know. Um, I don't know, yeah. a, some type of outing, mm-hmm. or we yeah. did <coughs> um, a walk mm-hmm. together, nice. uh, like the breast cancer walk. Yeah. We did that together mm-hmm. at our school. I've heard and, a lot mm-hmm. about people yeah. volunteering yeah. together yeah. as a as an office. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it does. Just... It brings people together, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. and it's not like like you were saying earlier. We spend so much time at work; mm-hmm. they're they almost are like our family. Yeah. So if you if you feel like you're close to the people, and mm-hmm. then also, if you feel like you're appreciated, then both of those things can go a long way, mm-hmm. I sure. think. The workplace is looking differently as well mm-hmm. with the mm-hmm. next generation. Mm-hmm. Um, more working out of the home, mm-hmm. yes. more working mobily. Um, it's 
it really is not being that nine to five at a desk in a cubicle mm-hmm, or an mm-hmm. office mm-hmm. anymore. Can you address that a little bit? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have several friends that come to mind and they are doing what you just said. I know I have a lot of friends that are, especially with, um, once again, with technology, I hate to bring that up, but it's real. You know what I mean? You can work from home in new ways and there's lots of opportunities even on social media for people to become influencers or, you know, it's just like a brand new thing that we're, I think we're seeing um, with this next generation. And it's wild to think about what could happen next. And I think that also with that, there are personalities that they work better from home. You know, I mm-hmm. had coworkers that I personally would get distra- distracted if I worked at home, but they do. They're more introverted and they can get more accomplished. And I think it's awesome that that is something that we're seeing becoming more of a trend. Some people find less distractions mm-hmm. by working at home. Yes. Because yeah. there's also all that people stuff. Yes. When you're <laughs> in an office yeah. mm-hmm. and there's all the, like you say, getting along mm-hmm. with people, but there's always those people yeah. things. <laughs> yes. And then it, you don't have those when you just mm-hmm. have your list of what has to get yep. done, go home and just and do, do it. it. Mm-hmm. Right. And that, that can be a, a pretty cool thing. Yeah. yeah. But uh, this is something we're seeing because technology mm-hmm. is different today than sure. it was even, oh my mm-hmm. goodness, 10 or 20 years yeah. ago. Right. right. You get your little laptop at work that you can take with you to a coffee shop and you can work at a coffee shop now. So, mm-hmm. yeah. All it's sorts of new things. Quite amazing. And it yet, is. that still is the workplace mm-hmm. and the workforce that yeah. we're looking yeah. at. Yeah. Um, what else do you tell young people uh, as far as being able to prepare them? I'm, I'm really especially <laughs> interested in this character building because yeah. I've heard people say, I need to hire, I can't find anyone to pass a drug test. Mm-hmm. I've heard this mm-hmm. time sure. and time again. What do you tell young people? My main... In, Amy will tell you this and all of my students will tell you this and they think that I'm funny and weird because of it. But my main thing is try to teach self-love because I think that if you love yourself, if you um, can, I I feel like that's where it all starts. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. if you love yourself enough to have high standards for yourself, if you love yourself enough to, you know, do something that you might not have wanted to do, but you should have done, mm-hmm. then, you know, that I that's honestly what I try to teach. Um, even through, like, we do, like, the mindfulness mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. other things like that. But um, it all, to me, boils down to self-love. Mm-hmm. You're working with high school students. Mm-hmm. Um, there are a lot of jobs right now that you can just step right into. Mm-hmm. Are kids today tending to seek out higher education first, getting the college degree, or going right into the (coughs) workforce? Do there Um, seem to be trends there? A lot of our students are going right into the workforce Mm -hmm. or or at least doing some type of vocational Mm -hmm. something. Do they say why? Um, They don't. They just say, well, we work at a dropout recovery high school. Mm -hmm. So most, or credit recovery, Mm -hmm. same thing, Uh whatever you want to call it. Right. Um, Most of them, they always say school's just not really for me. Mm-hmm. So, um, so you're helping them get that degree. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They more like hands-on stuff, mm-hmm. and that's and that's great because yeah. I remember back in the day when I told my mom I wanted to do something. I wanted I, I went to Maslin and mm-hmm. I wanted to do cosmetology, and she was like, "Nope, you're not doing that. You're going college prep." Like she wouldn't mm-hmm. let me, mm-hmm. and I I remember you know, my mom's a little bit older, you know, and, she, and back in her day it was go to Um, high school go to college get your career Mm -hmm. and you know that was it and we're seeing more and more now that um you can make a living other ways and even if you do get this skill you know this vocation and and have this skill that's something to always fall back on if if that's not going to be your uh you know full full full-time job Mm -hmm. eventually then at least you have something to fall back on if you ever do you know drop out of Mm -hmm. school or my father spent Half his career as a college administrator. Mm. Yeah. And the first thing out of his mouth was always, college is not for everybody. It's not. And it's true. Mm -hmm. It's true. There's so many. I think that at the school that I went to, Ohio Dominican, I think that there was um, like – I can think from the first year that I went there to the last year, and and I can think of at least half the people weren't there anymore Mm -hmm. by the last year. Mm -hmm. What's the advantage of a student coming to Canton Harbor High School (laughs) rather than just trying to earn their GED on their own? Yeah, so we are, like she said, dropout recovery, credit recovery. 
Um, a huge piece of that that I think is fantastic is it's accelerated so they can get out quicker because mm-hmm. um, some of our courses are not as long as a public school would be, meaning like they're more of a semester long course. Um, I love it. I think that it's a really great alternative, like you said, to getting a G- who You want that diploma. You know what I mean? Not that there's anything wrong with a GED, but um, our school is very accepting of people and wherever they're at in life. We're ages 14. I'm looking at Meredith. 14, 14 to, to 22. 22. Well, yeah. 20, once you turn 22. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's also another non-traditional part of it, which is a nice piece for because you know you never know when someone's mm-hmm. gonna want to suddenly start back up and try to get their credit so mm-hmm. what it's a great did, opportunity what do you find were the reasons that they dropped out in the first mm-hmm. place is there any kind of a trend there um a lot of them were students who i guess you could well this isn't true for all but mm-hmm. some that didn't really fit in mm-hmm. um okay. so they felt isolated at their mm-hmm. schools and also the big class sizes, we offer a little bit smaller class mm-hmm. sizes. So those two things and just, I don't know, mm-hmm. what else would you say? I'd say some of them do make poor choices. And mm-hmm. so that's why they are no longer welcome at their whatever school they were at mm-hmm. before. But yeah, exactly what you said. But they, what a great second yeah. chance. Mm-hmm. And then you are really preparing them for life, Absolutely. life skills mm-hmm. to go from there. How do people find out more about you? Can they come mm-hmm. for a visit, a tour? Yeah, definitely. They do tours and yeah. also online. We have a website, mm-hmm. cantonharbor.org, mm-hmm. I believe it yeah. is. And there's and Facebook. Or Facebook. Mm-hmm. Yep, mm-hmm. they're interested. And let's say some parents or grandparents are mm-hmm. really wanting to check this out for their mm-hmm. child. Yeah. They can just contact you and come mm-hmm. during school hours mm-hmm. to see what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever have open houses? Yeah. We don't, I don't know if we have open houses, but I've seen other people bring in and we do tours. Just come Any in and do of the a tour. principals mm-hmm. or our dean of student would be happy to give them a tour if they would like to check it out. Yeah. Final thoughts preparing kids for the future. What would be the key? If there's just one little key to <laughs> unlock that future for them, what would you share? Character development, mm-hmm. you know. Okay, back to that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Build yourself up and. Mm-hmm. You know, you want to offer something that nobody else can offer. Yeah. And if you are a person who, you know, is has a great personality, anybody's going to mm-hmm. want you yeah. to work for them. Well, those are great words to end mm-hmm. on. We would just yes. appreciate so much what you're doing. Amy Miller, Thank Meredith you. Baker, Canton Harbor High School. Thanks for what you bring to our community. Thank, Thank you. you.